Welcome back to We Chats with Brilliant People. So as the baseball season has just started again, I talk in this We Chat to Neil Huntington, General Manager of the Major League Baseball team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Neil has been in this position since 2007 and has helped the organization become a force to be reckoned with in the MLB. He gives us insight on the mental side of being a leader and the importance of balance in its many forms. Teams in the MLB are really starting to realize the importance of the mental side of the game, and Neil embodies resilience through his work as the GM and describes how he rides the waves. We also learn a little more about his family and his philosophy on being a good leader. I interviewed him at the end of a weekend think tank that I took part in at their training ground in Bradenton, Florida. So sit back and enjoy this wee chat over a cup of tea with the brilliant Neil Huntington. Welcome to Wee Chats with Brilliant People, hosted by Dr. Allison Rodius, Professor of Sports Psychology at John F. Kennedy University. In each episode, Allison talks to highly successful people in music, sport, and the boardroom. She digs into the mental training techniques that they use to ride out the waves that challenge them in work and in life. So enjoy these wee chats with brilliant people. Welcome back to Wee Chats with Brilliant People. Uh, today I am super excited to be here with Neil Huntington. Thank you very much for being part of the Wee Chats series. Wee Chats team, I think, really. I'm just going to claim you as part of my team <laughs> now. Neil is the general manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and we are here in this amazing facility, which is the southern home of the Pirates here in Bradenton, Florida and I have been here uh, attending a think tank and I've been inspired by the Pirates and Neil has been part of that inspiration and I wanted to talk to him today about what um, kinds of things that you do in, in your role and how how you have put uh, elements together to help your own role and, and help you be able to do what you need to do. But first of all, I just have a general question about what, is it, what does a GM do? <laughs> well, first of all, Austin, thank you so much for, for having me as a part of, of your program. And I'm humbled and, and honored, and, and I'm glad you clarified brilliant is the, is the, the equivalent of great, because I, I certainly <laughs> did not consider myself brilliant, and I was hoping I didn't drag the value that, of your overall program not. down. No, so, no. But, um, you know, a general manager, um, the ultimate responsibility I have is, is for the major league team that we put on the field, and, and if it's a good team, it's the result of a lot of very, really good people, our mm -hmm. coaches, our support staff, our scouts that go out and evaluate talent. Um, we have a variety of different people that impact our players mentally, physically, fundamentally, and personally. So uh, when we put a good team on the field, it's because of those people and decisions that we make. And, and when we don't put a good team on the field, typically it's, it's decisions that I've made that haven't worked out very well. So uh, the, the selection of players and then the development of those players, the, the selection of coaches and the development of those coaches, the support staff, the, the various instructors that we have throughout the system, it, we call it baseball operations. We're responsible for... Um, everything from the wins and losses at the major league level all the way down to our, our selection and addition of international players that go to the Dominican Republic or come to our, our, our southern home, but also uh, we have six minor league teams throughout our system. Mm -hmm. um, different levels, players progress through the minor league system to the major leagues, and um, I'm ultimately responsible for all of that, but, but fortunately we have incredible people that, that lead and direct the different departments and then lead and direct the different components of each branch. Hmm. You, have a, you have a big job. Then that's why we have to have a lot of very good people um, above and beyond my own abilities. It, it does. It takes a, yeah. it, it it takes a village to to put a, a very good baseball team on the field and and to keep a very good baseball team on yeah. the field. And how long have you been with the Pirates? Uh, this will be my eighth season with the Pirates. My eighth cool. season in this role. Uh, I've been in baseball twenty. I think this is my twenty fourth season in baseball overall. Mm -hmm. Been with the Montreal Expos that have now become the Washington Nationals, uh, and then I was with the Cleveland Indians for about ten seasons. So. Uh, incredibly fortunate to be around tremendous baseball people, tremendous people, mm -hmm. uh, people who are willing to let a young guy and now a not so young guy ask questions to grow and get better. 
Um, I've had tremendous mentors and friends throughout the game and, and uh, now I'm trying to give some of that back and mm -hmm. provide people with opportunities to meet their personal and professional goals as, as in my role. Mm -hmm. So my focus um, in my job and also today is particularly about anything that you do um, to help get you to where you have come, to, to get you here now in your role, and also anything that you do on a typical basis. Um, you run a you run a team. I mean, in a way, you're the you're a coach. In a way, uh, you're obviously a leader. Um, what kinds of things have you put in place? You know, just generally, is there anything that you can pinpoint that you have put in place? Oh wow! For yourself, um, probably the, the the best thing we've done or I've done is the great people that, mm -hmm. that we have in mm -hmm. place here. We have a core vi vision. We have a core philosophy. We have a shared vision and a shared philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yet we want people to challenge us, and we want to continue to grow and get better, and we want to develop ourselves as individuals, and, and we believe that if we do the right thing for the right reasons, we'll get the results that we want. We're, mm. we're, we very much believe our process creates our results, and, and if our process is sound, then our results will be sound. So let me ask you, uh, on a personal basis then, are you open to being challenged? You said you know that's part of your philosophy? I, I, I work to be. Um, I think constructive criticism and or direct criticism is, is, is a wonderful thing from people that you trust and respect. And right. uh, we try to create that environment that if, if I'm doing something the wrong way, if I'm doing something that's not helpful to the organization, I certainly hope that the guys that I work with feel comfortable enough to say, hey, this bothers me, or hey, we should be doing this differently, or why did we do this, or why didn't we do that? Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I, I can and, and am creating that environment where we can respectfully challenge each other because um, the second that we lose our humility, the second that we think this that we've got this thing figured out, it, it, it's going to beat us over the head and beat us down. Right, right, right. And what do you do when, um, if somebody comes to you and they say something that you don't particularly like and but you, you know you're not necessarily responding it in the moment back to them do you how, how do you deal with that in your in yourself how do you, how it, do you it's still something I'm, I'm trying to evolve with mm -hmm. um, the best lesson I learned as a parent was watching mm -hmm. my four-year-old son and my two-year-old son mm -hmm. battle over something mm -hmm. and, and I saw what happened and realizing that my four-year-old had one side to a story my two-year-old had a different side to the story and the truth was probably somewhere in between mm -hmm. and that when I hear differing viewpoints or I hear differing opinions the truth is somewhere in between and, and that is that person's perspective mm -hmm. and that's their perception and they did honor that even though I may not agree with it even though I may not think I'm doing they think I'm doing something, mm -hmm. so I need to listen to that. I need to honor that, um, and and when needed, I need to make an adjustment and, and try to improve upon that, uh, or I need to figure out why they felt that way. What did I do that caused them to feel that way, or what didn't I do to cause them to feel that way, and, and take that constructive criticism and, and try to work to get better. Um, mm. I, I can't say that, that every time I've been told something, I've adapted or adjusted, mm -hmm. because there are times where we need a professional filter. Mm -hmm. And that perspective, while I respect it and appreciate that it's theirs, I may not take it as, okay, I need to make an adjustment. Right. If I always make the adjustment, I'm probably not a great leader. Mm -hmm. If I never make the adjustment, I'll guarantee you I'm a terrible leader. And right. so I work to, to try to be the best leader that I can be and continue to grow and evolve every day. Who taught you how to be a leader? Oh, wow. Um, probably starts with my parents. Mm. Um, my mom and my dad are, are kind of the cornerstone of everything that I've, I've tried to become. Mm -hmm. um, my two brothers are, are the next level there. Um, played for a lot of very good coaches along the way, had great friends along the way. Um, and then getting into professional baseball, just taking snippets from each person, mostly good, but sometimes we learn what not to do yeah. is just as impactful as what to do. Yeah. And, and so I've had some of those along the way. Uh, from a professional standpoint, John Hart, Mark Shapiro were the general manager and the assistant general manager that brought me to the Indians and I had a chance to work in different roles for each of them. Um, managers on the field, Philippe Alou was the Montreal Expos manager, Eric Wedge was an Indians manager, Charlie Mars a sports psychologist with the Indians, uh, Chris Antonetti is a great friend and a, man and a mentor, he's now um, the general manager with the Indians, Dan Duquette gave me my first job, he's now the general manager with the Orioles. And, and there's too many to name, um, but ultimately the, the biggest impact on me is my family, my right. wife, uh, Becca, our, our three children. Um, they remind me every day that what I do is important, 
if I'm a good dad and husband. And if I'm not a good dad and I'm not a good husband, right. then what I'm doing, uh, putting wins and losses on the field in Pittsburgh, that's not as important. And, and so we are, most elite people I've been around, you hear the, the term balance. Right. Most elite people that I've been around are, are, and I'm stealing from a colleague here, technically really out of balance. Right. But it's a matter of how out of balance do you allow, do you allow yourself to become and do you ever swing the pendulum to the personal side and get out of balance on the personal side because you're, you're focused on your family? And, and we all need to do that at right. different points in time. There is no perfect pendulum swing as long as we're fighting to find some elements of balance and as long as we recognize that we're out of balance and try to keep it as minimal as we can, then we have a chance. So, um, I, you know, I, I, still, I still, despite the title that I hold and despite the, 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 the time that I've held it, I still consider myself an evolving leader and I still consider that I have a lot of growth and, and a lot of time to get better and it's why I love the Think Tank this weekend. Yeah. Opportunity to get some incredibly talented people in a room and yeah. whether it's a small nugget or a big nugget, take away what they do well and, and how can that be applied here with us in the Pirates. Yeah, I think being open is incredibly uh, empowering in a way. I think, Absolutely. I think too, a, a great respect that you have that evolving idea uh, that that helps you in your leadership. I think that's um, I think that's great. So when you um, when you say you come home, you've been away for a while, and you come home, and you know you're frustrated by something that's happened. Um, what do you do? Do you um, maybe talk it out? Do you just deal with it inside? What, what's your process? Well, when when uh, any time I get a chance to walk in the door and see my wife, it reminds me that life is really good mm -hmm. and while we may have lost a game or something may not have gone the way we'd hoped she's there and she loves me whether we win or lose and, and, and that's mm -hmm. unconditional um, when our kids were little walk in the door and, and that five-year-old that runs to you with open arms because they want a hug mm -hmm. that melts away all the world's problems at that point in time a little bit different now that they're 17 15 and 13 you mean they're not um, running to no no not they're the same way they used to i mean you know you get a hey dad and and uh and you, you know try to engage with them but but they're at that age um but it, it's still the, the, the fact that I know that they'll love me unconditionally and, and, and I need to work at that. Um, but they don't care whether we win or lose, although my 15-year-old cares a little bit more than, than, uh, <laughs> than my 13 and 17-year-old. But um, there are times where I will decompress and we will, my, my 17 and 15-year-old have really good baseball minds for, for kids that age and we will decompress and we will talk about the game and what went well and what didn't go well. But then there are other times where I can walk in the door and with our three dogs or three kids and my wife, I can, I can compartmentalize mm -hmm. and, and put it away mm -hmm. um, until it's time to come back to it and, and uh, I mean review and, and and going through everything we do I mean uh, as an organization we, we pride ourselves on preparation execution and review mm -hmm. um, and typically when I when I get into the car to go home that that drive home maybe not the smartest thing to do but I'm thinking about what went well what mm -hmm. didn't go well not just in the game but any interaction I had during the day any decision I made during that day but when I do get home I do try to unplug just for a little bit um, lock in on them, try to find out what's good in their world and what isn't good in their world and, mm -hmm. and then, but it always creeps back in. And this is a 24-7 job yeah. and, and uh, trying to not be too out of balance is, is a hard part. Well, you know, I like to actually think of balance, balance doesn't have to, I think of scales, balance doesn't have to look like that, mm -hmm. balance can look like that and you're still balanced in the middle at your fulcrum but you're, you know, it, it just looks different. It does. And everybody has a different way of being in balance, whatever that whatever that means to them. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, for us, the key is the fight to, f to find some element of balance. 50-50 doesn't exist mm -hmm. in, in most worlds. Mm -hmm. It's just you don't want to be 90-10. Right, right. And that's our struggle. So we, yeah, philosophically we agree. You um, said it's a fight. In what way? Well, in, in that uh, my first two years as a GM, I was probably way out of balance too long because the mm -hmm. job can be, and this isn't the only job, but people can get too consumed by right. their jobs or by something that's going on in their world and they begin to take for granted what's the most important thing in the world to them or, or for me it was, I, I did, there were times I took for granted my family was always going to be there. So it, it is, it, it, it's work to, to in, in, in my mind it's work to be a good leader, it's work to be a good husband, it's work to be a good friend, it's work to be a good dad, it's work to be a good teammate mm -hmm. um, and, and trying not to take anything for granted and, and trying to learn from others, respect others while also trying to make sure we're headed down the right pathway. Mm -hmm. I like that you use we a lot. Who's we? Uh, 
it's the people that I work with, mm -hmm. and then as we make a family decision, it's my family. So mm -hmm. I, I um, I'm not a fan of the word I. Mm -hmm. I. I generally do try to avoid it because I don't think it is an I. I don't think mm -hmm. it is about me. This is a we. We are an organization. We are a family, and, and I believe that. I wonder if that helps you not only stay grounded, but also helps you in terms of your psychological resilience in a way. It's helped you get you here, but it's also a safety net to some extent. The, the, those are the people that you rely on, you can lean on a little bit. Is there an element of that? I hadn't thought of it that way, but there probably is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we deserve, although I will say, I typically live by we deserve the credit, meaning they deserve the credit and mm -hmm. I deserve the blame. So, mm -hmm. um, which I think most, most good leaders take that approach, that you defer credit and, 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 uh, mm -hmm. and take blame. Oh. Um, but it, it is. It, it's a great support system we have here. I, again, the family that I have is a great support system. Uh, they do help keep me grounded, and, and uh, our guys do help me try to find the small victories and, and celebrate That's our good. small successes along the way. It's not something that I'm, I'm typically good at, mm -hmm. um, but I, I do. we do. rely. I rely very heavily on the people that I work with. That's definitely going to help you get that balance back to the you know, like you say, you're probably never going to be 50-50, but away from the 90-10, mm -hmm. I like that. Where, what's your ideal number, what do you think? Uh, you know, I, I, it's probably 60-40, but it's ah. more realistically it's 70-30-ish yeah. in, in, in somewhere in there. And, and, uh, um, and again, that's where the, there will be times, like this weekend, for example, I'm going to swing the pendulum the other way. Right. We're in a good spot, and this weekend's about my family, and hopefully I'll be able to put my phone away for most of the weekend, and, and then there are other times where it's 90-10 the other way. We get different points in the year where it just is 90-10 the other right. way by, by nature, but that's where hopefully that uh, we can get some quality quantity time, because yeah. uh, it's not just quality time, but quality and quantity time and, and make up for it, with, like whether that. it's with staff members or with, yeah. you know, with our players or, or certainly with my family. Quality, quantity, time, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal that phrase. Um, just a couple more questions then. So, one that I'm really personally curious about and professionally is confidence. What do you do to help yourself feel confident when, you know, things might not be going so well, uh, but you, you still need to do your job, you need to run the show? What do you do? I'm going to fall back on preparation. Mm. Uh, I'm going to exhaustively search for any piece of information that can help make a decision or that can help mm. uh, make something that's not going right go better. Mm. Um, and, and that's uh, that's my nature. My nature is what are we missing? Um, mm. Is there something else we could be doing? Is there something else we should be doing? So my confidence comes from the preparation. If I feel good about our process, mm -hmm. even if the result isn't where we wanted it to be, I can still be confident and still learn from the bad decision outcome um, and, and hopefully not repeat the same mistakes along the way. But, but I, I do, I, I fall back on, on my preparation of my process. Mm -hmm. Because preparation will just help you feel, what is it that you feel from that? What do you get from it? It, it gives me the comfort that we've done Almost, because you never do everything, but right. almost everything we should have done to mm -hmm. put ourselves in a position to get the right outcome. Mm -hmm. So again, process creates results. I, I'm a firm believer in that. So if our process is solid, then even if we don't get the outcome, what did we miss? What did we undervalue? What do we overvalue? Why? And then we move on. Mm -hmm. um, but but we, we, as much as baseball is a, a game about wins and losses at the yeah. major league level, if we have a bad process and we get wins, it's luck. And it's not going. It's not sustainable. If we have a great process and we don't get wins, I believe the wins are going to come, mm -hmm. uh, and we believe the wins are going to come because we have really good people. We're doing the right things for the most part. Uh, we're doing it the right way, and, and we're doing it with really good people. Excellent. I like that. Okay. So the last question I have is: If you knew you wouldn't fail, what would you do tomorrow? If I knew I wouldn't fail, what would I do outside of baseball? Or it's entirely up to you. I wouldn't fail. Um, I would probably take a step back from everything and go try to be the best dad, husband, and father that I could. Best <laughs> husband and father that I could. Be. If I, if I knew that, that that was what was going to work, mm -hmm. that, that's what I would go do. You know, you can still strive for that. Too. <laughs> well, I do strive for. It. I do. I just I just know that there's other things that I have to do to be able to do that right now. But if if I knew that was the only thing I had to worry yeah. about, that was what I would go worry about. That's cool. Or focus on, because I wouldn't worry about it. I focus on it. Uh, that is a big uh, rephrase. I like, <laughs> I like that. Well, thank you so much for being on WeChats.
Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Tune in next time to see who's on WeChats with Brilliant People. Bye bye from Florida. We hope you enjoyed these WeChats. You can follow WeChats with Brilliant People on Twitter at WeChats and Facebook. And subscribe to the podcast series on iTunes or any Droid platform. We Chats with Brilliant People.